After almost three decades of civil war, this is what peace looks like on the island of Mindanao in the southern Philippines. Until just nine months ago, the Muslim minority waged a brutal war of independence against the Philippines government, costing untold thousands of lives. Now a deal's been struck, giving the Muslims control over only part of Mindanao. But few believe the fragile peace can hold, and this anti-terrorist squad remain on full alert. But some of our people, they prepare this one. This is a very powerful weapon. A year ago, this man's name was enough to strike terror into the hearts of Filipinos. Norm Iswari was the most prominent guerrilla leader of the dirty, difficult war. Today he's a politician, and courtesy of the peace agreement, he's the governor of the autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao. This is M14, uh, M16, used by the Americans during the Vietnam War. But Miswari's ambition is to control still more of the island, and in three years' time the people will vote on that. Every part of Mindanao we have this kind of weapons. M202, M203. So now he must achieve his aims politically and give up his guns. This one, with a grenade launcher. See? I want to turn Mindanao and the islands into one of the most peaceful parts of the globe. Peace, most important. See? See? Peace is very important to us. Because without peace, we may not be able, despite the fact that this land is so rich, you just don't know how much resources we have. No one else could have delivered peace to Mindanao. For 30 years, Miswari dominated the conflict, commanding the largest, best-armed guerrilla force. Miswari promised development to a people weary of war. But as he courts investors from Saudi Arabia and Korea, the problems confronting him seem overwhelming. Spiralling crime, radical Muslim factions and a suspicious Christian population. And like other rebels turned politician, Miswari finds himself isolated. To his old comrades, he's sold out. And to his old enemies, he's still untrustworthy. Ten metres away. Are they not grateful that I agreed? to give concession to them at the cost of my being charged by my people of betraying the cause of our elders. Some people say only Nur Miswari may decided to sign this kind of law. You see? And now they... Well, let them say what they want. The first problem for Miswari to solve is crime. His capital, Cotabato, is gripped by terror. Ironically, months ago, Miswari would have encouraged this lawlessness. Now it's his job to stop it. But economic collapse in a city awash with weapons has turned kidnapping into a virtual industry. Where are we going to get money? How much are we going to pay? Only have a very small business. Antoinette Lu's father was snatched from a private home by seven armed men dressed as police. Antoinette learned of his disappearance on the radio. Her father, Fernando, is the third person in her family to be kidnapped. But after four days, she's heard nothing from the abductors. I couldn't help but to cry sometimes, but I have to be strong. I have to. For my father's sake. And for the rest of your family, how are they coping? They support me. Help me to be strong. Sadly, in Cotabato, Antoinette's just one of many. There's a kidnapping here every three days. 
Beyond the troubled cities, Miswari faces a different set of problems, expectations he can't fulfil. After leading Mindanao's Muslims on the annual pilgrimage to Mecca, Miswari visits family in the southern village of Taluk Sangai, home to Mindanao's first mosque. This is his heartland. Miswari drew his guerrillas from villages like this. Now they expect to be repaid. Nor Miswari's biggest problem is time. After 25 years of civil war in villages like this one with no water, no communications, people expect their chairman to fix their problems overnight. He's got less than three years to prove himself. That's when the government will hold a referendum on Mindanao. <laughs> Before that vote, Norm Iswari must resettle his men. Asli Sali is one of 30,000 soldiers who are looking to their leader to provide them with a future. Asli and his friends left school at 12 to join the revolution. They were prepared to die for the cause. Seven years later, the peace deal has ended the only life they've ever known. <laughs> But in reality, there are few business opportunities waiting for Asli Sali. And their lack of education means that most of Miswari's men cannot be integrated into the Philippines Armed Forces. Are you able to give the soldiers anything at the moment? Nothing. We have given nothing to them. Only 1,100 have been integrated. No, Ali is still in the process of being integrated. We just have to accept our fate, and therefore we have, will be compelled to uh, uh, re reconstruct and rehabilitate our homeland with our bare hands and with the support of our friends and our brothers from abroad. Sangkat sebiwang sa sa dua tu sa sa sa. But radical Muslim brothers at home are in fact Miswari's biggest threat. Sa sa dua. This ragtag group of soldiers is still fighting the Philippines government, and by default now fighting Miswari. They're from the rival fundamentalist splinter group, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. They claim they could call on 120,000 men after massive defections from Miswari's side. Our fighters have a very high morale. They are willing to die and they are for the cause, and they are willing to sacrifice. We have, uh, we have uh, been waging this war for more than 20 years, and uh, our fighters are very determined, and uh, uh, up to now their morale is uh, very high. Haji Murad is the military chief of staff of the MILF. Battlefield, the battle area. This is Buldon, ah, yes, where Buldon, the yes. shelling has been going on. Their jungle camp, Abu Bakar, in the hills of Mindanao was especially chosen because it's remote and difficult to overrun. Even travelling within its boundaries is treacherous. There are no sealed roads and 10,000 people live here without running water or electricity. They're self-sufficient, even making their own tools and weapons. We want to liberate the Bangsamoro people, the entire Bangsamoro people. So that is the objective of the MILF. Ideally, it would be the entire Mindanao. However, we feel that uh, at this point in time, 
since not all of Mindanao is now occupied by the Bangsamoro people. So maybe we can be flexible on the area. Every aspect of life at Abu Bakr is ruled by the Quran, including crime and punishment. The MILF levies its own taxes and runs its own courts and prisons. This one holds people who've committed minor offences under Islamic law. For major offences, the MILF has other jails and its own firing squads. This rebel group is the government here. And even if this is not Norm Iswari's model of an independent Muslim state, it terrifies the Christians of Mindanao. The fear now is in the countryside, where uh, the, some of the MNLF members who have not been absorbed by the army are now down from the hills and still armed, and they do not know what to do. Despite Mizwari's ambition to extend Muslim control, in fact, 85% of Mindanao is Christian. And unlike Mizwari's capital, Cotabato, this city, General Santos, is peaceful. The economy here is booming, and the locals want to protect their prosperity. That's why they don't want to join Nor Mizwari's Muslim region. Congresswoman Lou Antonino is already campaigning for a no vote in the 1999 referendum. She's suspicious of Norm Iswari. Perhaps being a rebel leader, you distrust a man. In his capability or capacity to be a leader within the system, uh, I think I don't have that enough confidence in Norm Iswari. These carpet buggers who came from Luzon, who have grabbed our land, we have every reason to be suspicious of their motivations in coming here. We defended this land for four centuries with our blood. And here are people who are saying they don't trust us. What reason do they have? If they don't trust us, they better get away from here. We don't need them here. This fiery exchange reveals Mizwari has not yet acquired the political skills needed to woo voters, especially Christians who are in the majority and remain hostile to him. But it's not just the Christians. In this same city, there's a Muslim constituency Mizwari must win over, presenting a different challenge to his political skills. The waterfront in this boom town is prime real estate. A multi-million dollar hotel is planned here. But this small Muslim community and their mosque will have to go. They can build a five-star hotel within that mosque is still there. Yes. If I were, if I were the engineer or the constructor, I could build the mosque, uh, I could build the five-star hotel. The mosque is still there. This is a slum community, and Layla and her neighbours built their mosque brick by brick from tiny donations collected over years. They've appealed to Norm Iswari, who has to juggle the wider public benefit with the local interests of his politically savvy constituents. And that late uh, February, if they force to demolish this mosque, I think many people will die. Yes, because we will go hand in hand. We will not leave our mosque. Layla's family refused to leave, although most of the community has been relocated. They're fighting the development in the courts, and they're sending a message to Norm Iswari. 
And what if no Miss Wari cannot help you? Well, we have still more leaders, not only no Miss Wari. Norm is wary must learn the tough lessons of electoral survival. He has a monumental job ahead of him. He must provide for impoverished Muslims and placate fearful Christians before the referendum in 1999. Part politician, part pragmatic rebel, Ms. Wari says there'll be war again if voters reject him. If you don't win the referendum, there will be war? Most probably there will be war in Mindanao because people will be dis disenchanted and disappointed after we achieve the peace and then there will be another disturbance, you see. Of course, I don't like the recurrence of war. I don't like uh, bloodshed anymore. But that's just the way I look at it. And this if the people are not satisfied, with the outcome, what do you expect then? Getting this far has been hard enough. Bringing real peace and prosperity to Mindanao will be much harder still.